Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Red Dragon Sports. I'm your host, Jeff Hazard, Assistant Director of Athletics and Sports Information Director here at SUNY Oneonta. And as we continue through our journey of the winter sports, tonight we're going to talk men's basketball. We've invited in studio head coach Vince Medici and a couple of our captains. So if you please join me after the break, I'll be back with Vince Medici, head coach. What makes D3 special is the ability to participate in my team and within the broader community. The perfect ending to a perfect season. Being a D3 student athlete has completely expanded my life. I learned how to lead. I really found a voice. What time is it? It's, time. it's more about the experience rather than just a sport itself. Without the experience of being a Division III student athlete, I wouldn't be the person who I am today. NCAA Division III. Discover. Develop. Dedicate. Welcome back to the show. Joining me now is head men's basketball coach Vince Medici. Welcome back to the show, Vince. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Uh, why don't you tell us how it's going? We're about two-thirds away through the season. Could you give us a little synopsis? Well, if you, if you, if you look at win-loss, it's not going great, but um, I think as a, as a collective group, it's, I think it's going very well. I think there, we have a lot of talent on our team. I think we're very young, a little inexperienced, and a little small inside, but I, you know what? I, I've had worse seasons, so um, I think this year is, is a good stepping stone for the future. Right. A lot of uh, people would look at, you know, the win-loss record and say, well, they're not that good, but, you know, if people come and watch us, they can tell that we do have some pretty talented players, especially the younger, younger players that we have now. Uh, when you're preparing for a season and going in and you know you're going to have a, a young squad, I mean, really, what, what kind of, how do you set the tempo for them to try and kind of get where you want? Well, it, it's it's hard because you're you're trying different ma different players in different positions, and you're you've got so much youth and, and who plays well together. So it takes it takes quite a few you know months to get that together. And I think we've kind of figured it out now. And um, you know we've been in a lot of games, and uh, it's just up now. It's up to them to kind of figure out how to finish a game, you right. know, and win a game. Right. You know. Now where do because um, of course um, you know we're going to have Frankie on, who's uh, you know team captain and as a sophomore. Uh, Conference Rookie of the Year. I mean, does having someone like that, even though he's young, uh, coming back? I mean, how do you think that helps with some of the younger kids? I think it's great because his leadership, especially in preseason, kind of set the tone. Where we, uh, you know, we, he had a lot of workouts demanding the kids to be there, and I thought the kids really inspired to follow his lead. And I, I think uh, to get us into this year, it kind of, you know, separated the men from the boys, so to speak. And uh, right. I think we had the right crop of guys on our team, and. Uh, I think it's his leadership is just going to get us where we're going to where we need to go. Right now, his um, uh, the roster, your size of your roster. You know, you might have kept a few more. Like when you think you're going to have a, a team that you need to grow and build with. Uh, I mean, do you do you want to keep extra players around just to see how some of them might develop during the season? Or yeah, that that's pretty much the way it was. You know, we brought in five freshmen, and uh, you know, you just there's there's some kids that you've had for four years, and you just don't see any growth. So you just like you're saying to yourself. Well, it's probably wiser to keep a few extra and, you know, because they're still young kids, so they're still going to grow at a different pace. So you figure you carry the 16 that we're carrying and, and some advance and some kind of stay the same and, you know, some don't advance at all. But right. I think having more numbers, you have more of a, you know, chance to, to see more growth out of other kids. Right. Now, how do you think uh, within maybe like building team chemistry and that kind of stuff, you know, I mean, does it... Is it tougher with a younger team uh, where there maybe isn't a lot of upperclassmen? It's hard because now everything's like kind of on my shoulders and Frankie's shoulders being the captain. It's, it, they're taking the lead from us. So, you know, you have to kind of teach them every little nuance of not just the basketball game, but, right. you know, the academic end, the community service, the how you behave on campus. So you, you're, you're teaching 24-7. Right. Now, does that, uh, does it get any easier having someone like Frankie to be able to you know maybe if you're not around you know he's passing on whatever you th he thinks you would I think he does want. a good job of, of taking what I say and passing it on to the guys and I think they they respect that I mean you know like you said last year he's a rookie of the year on a team that really wasn't that good but to get rookie there that's a pretty good you know accolade to have on right. a team that's not so good so. right um, so within the SUNYAC I mean again of course the SUNYAC is um, you know the teams, I and mean, we've been been in every we've been in pretty much every game. I mean, it's exciting to watch. It's it's fun basketball. And you know, like you said, it's just getting over that hump. Maybe a basket here or a basket there. 
you know, changes maybe the outcome of a game. I mean, certainly, we, you know, one of our big wins this year was against Oswego, who, mm. you know, will probably make the SUNYAC tournament, and they were sure. an NCAA team a couple of years ago. I mean, yep. so how does that play into, um, you know, how you build that success and momentum? Well, you know, first of all, we make a really difficult schedule. Our non-league schedule is very difficult. We're playing teams that have all been in the NCAAs like a year ago. Um, so th that's the first challenge. But when it comes to conference play, and we try to make that schedule to help us in our conference. Right. And with the exception of the Buffalo game, where we, uh, we lost by 21, I think. Other than that, everything has been around 10, 10 or less. Right. So I, I think we're right there at the door. Um, I just think now the boys have to step through it and realize that they are good enough to win and play 40-minute basketball game instead of like 35. Right. Um, now, in years past, uh, you know, we had that veteran leadership. Now we're the young. Uh, now, as you're recruiting and trying to bring in, you know, classes, you know, another class behind this one, how do some of those younger kids uh, play into that? I mean... Well, I think they're going to make us deeper, you know, and, and the way we do it in our program is even if you're a returner and you've, you've played, you know, mega minutes, everyone gets a fair, it's a clean slate when we walk into gym October 15th. Right. So I think those young kids coming in see that the opportunity that, you know, I could probably earn some minutes against these guys. So I think that's, that entices them to come here and they, plus they see that we are making progress. They come to the games, they see that, you know, we might be one or two players away from being really, really good. Right. Now, does that... Um Competitive, uh, you know, I think it probably, it was you would think, maybe competitive in the gym. You know, everybody's competing for playing time, you know, with younger kids. Maybe it's a little, you know, a little better for you. I mean, how does that play into your... It's great because I think, it, any, I mean, we've had different lineups, starting lineup for many different games. I want to say the last maybe four games we've had the same one. But up until then, it was, it was you know, every day we could go to practice and, you know, whoever rises to the top, you're going to get minutes. Right. So we've done that. So it's been, practices have been very competitive. Right. Now, how, um, who are some of the younger players, uh, you know, this year that have been doing well besides uh, well, Zach and Frankie? Well, I think um, you know, our freshman, uh, Jackson Zuvik is, you know, he's a little inconsistent right now, but he's got a world of talent. And I think once he realizes that he works hard every day, he, he, you're going to see him blossom into a great Division three player here. Right. Um, Jack Dignan has been a, a great surprise. I mean, not a surprise from watching him play in high school. I thought he was very good. But to come in and, and be asked to play as many minutes as we're asking him to and be consistent, I mean, that, that's a great sign. Right. He seems to be a pretty intense competitor. Fireball off the bench. High energy, yeah. High energy guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is that uh, how important it is to have have those guys on the team? It's great because it, you know, other guys just see that that's the level you have to play at. That's the enthusiasm you have to play with. Right. You know, I mean, truly loves the game, and he realizes, you know, you play for four years, you have a hundred games scheduled, and a hundred games go fast. Yep. So you want to you want to play every moment like it's your last, and I, he does that. Right. And I think that that is going to help in the future because then the kids that come in next year are going to see that. Right. and see that high energy and say, well, that's how we play here at Oneonta. Right, and which is important. And, that's, yeah. and again, two years ago when we were in the you know, NCAs, that's what we were, right. kind of that same philosophy with some of the kids we had there with. Um, oh, definitely with Grimes and yeah. Beckford and those guys, yeah. Um, other parts of your program, of course, Division Three. I mean, it is about, you know, you, you want to compete, you want to be on a team, participation, but, you know, you, we talked a little bit about academics and community service. Uh, what other kinds of things do you do to pass on the philosophy of, of Division Three? Well, we obviously stay on top of their academics. I mean, we, you know, I think we, had, we have 16 guys on the, on the team. I want to say probably nine or ten were above a 3-0. So it was it was it was inspiring yeah. to see that. And the last last semester, we had one of the best GPAs in basketball history here. So it was so that that element is really starting to continue to grow and get better. Um, as as far as people, they're they're great guys. I mean, they're people that you you know you you wouldn't mind having them babysit your children. You know, they're they're quality guys. Community service, all the all the things that we did all year, community wise, no questions asked. They were there. They did it. They enjoyed doing it. Right. You know, and you could see that. You know, when we went to Hawaii, you could just see that. You know, they're 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 a family. They sit together when we go to dinners. You know, they don't spread out like some teams do. They're they're they really care about each other. Yeah. Now, what kind of um, what kind of community service things are we involved in with men's basketball? Well, we we did a clinic down at the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. We did a, a food drive for uh, St. Mary's uh, Food Pantry. Yeah. Um, we do, uh, uh, geez, I'm trying to think of the other things that we did. We also do, um, the, the, we have a clinic for the, um, the Y as well. They come here yep. and they do it. In the past, we've done Pathfinders, um, uh, yeah, we community have. homes, yeah. where they come in with their, their basketball team. Yeah. And, and, and we'll play, you know, do a little clinic with them as now well. How important is that for the, 
players on the team, especially the younger ones, uh, to be involved in activities like that. I think it's great. I think it's great for, for all kids if they're athletic athletes or non-athletes. I think when, you, when, you, when you're out there working with, with people that aren't as fortunate as you are, I think it gives you a new appreciation of where you're at. Right. And I think it also, it, it also warms your heart when you go to help people. Right. You know, in that sense. And I think down the road when they're out of here and they leave here, they'll, they'll, they'll do more community service on their own. Right. Now, the, uh, you know, we see a lot of crazy things in college athletics, you know, especially at the higher levels with, you know, things going on. Uh, what about Division Three? you think makes it special, uh, you know, to coach in this level and also to recruit kids to this level? I, well, you, first of all, you get them here for four years. You know, that's, that's the one thing. And I think you build a bond. You know, it, we don't, we, in the nine years I've been here now, we, we've basically got a family. We have an alumni game now, consistently has over 20 people show up. And I think that, you know, and they, and they get to meet these guys and, they, you know, they talk to them about, here's what you need to do to get better. And, we, you know, we're, we're watching you. Even though we're not here in Oneonta, we're watching you from afar. But we are still supporting you. Right. And I think that's, that's the best thing about Division Three is they have friends for life. They have, they have a coach that cares about them after they leave school as well. Right. So. Now, of course, uh, when you came here, you came from a junior college setting, you know, two-year school. Uh, what are the biggest differences between, the, between those two levels? Uh, well, there, I think there's two. There's one at the junior college level, um, you, you don't get a lot of time spent with them because it's, it's a community school. They're driving there. There's no dorms. They're not coming to your office. And at that time, it was part-time. So I was only there for practice, and I was gone. So it was hard to build that kind of, you know, connection with the players. Um, that's one difference. The other one is these guys are here. They know what the, the future brings. They're set at their school. They're happy here. There, those guys are still fighting to see where they're going to go for their, four, right. their, their last two years. Right. So, so it's a little different when it comes to teaching the game of basketball where one group is set and knows that they got to work together as a group. The other group is trying to impress and, and find scholarships and move right. on. Right. Now, what, uh, when you're recruiting student athletes here, I mean, what are the real, what are the two things that you really tell them uh, to be a successful student athlete here? I mean, what do you tell them? Well, time management is the first thing is, you know, academics, time management and, and doing the right things, you know, off the court. And then just being the dedicated athlete where it's not just, you know, October 15th, okay, now we start basketball. It's, it's a four-year commitment where from the day you send your deposit, you need to start working to get ready to become a better player. Right. And I think that's what you try to instill in them. And, and the ones that do it become great players. Right. Uh, and certainly, um, you know, we've seen it over the nine years. I mean, the players that have come through, I mean, I know that you, the bond, I mean, they come back and it is. It's like, you know, you're like a second father to some of them and they, they appreciate what you've done for them. And certainly, uh, you know, looking at the kids that we have in the program now, you could see that they appreciate everything that you do for them. So we uh, mm -hmm. want to say thanks for doing that and I continue to do that. that. And uh, we know that these guys will continue to work hard and good luck the rest of the way. Yes. I mean, we might not get in the tournament this year, but certainly we know that, you know, as we go forward with the players like Zach and Frankie, we'll probably get there again. So um, I'm sure we will yeah, soon enough. We will. Well, thanks for coming by tonight. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. All right. I'd like to thank head basketball coach Vince Medici for coming by tonight. And after the break, I'll be joined by Zach Major. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Welcome back to the show. Joining me now is sophomore men's basketball player, Zach Major. Welcome to the show, Zach. Thanks for having me. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm from Rockland County, New York. Uh, I went to Clarkstown South High School, played on the varsity team for three years. Um, and uh, I'm a communications major here yeah. and just really enjoying school. Yeah, now you uh, joined us uh, the second half of last year, yeah. uh, kind of felt your way through the rest of the season. Uh, what was that like to, you know, you started at Mansfield, Mansfield and then you came, came here for yeah. half a year? Um, it was a bit of a transition. I mean, uh, it was kind of rough at first, but, you know, I got the hang of it. You know, I got really like the guys and um, I'm just happy that I'm in one place now and here right. for the rest of my time. Right, and just trying to, you know, like you said, you know, just trying to fit in with the guys and trying to find your place out on the floor, which it looks like you've kind of settled in pretty, pretty well this year. 
Yeah, I feel a lot more comfortable this year than I did last year. Um, I didn't really know my role that much on the team last year, coming in halfway through the season. But I feel like this year, you know, I really got a good handle on it. And, you know, working with Frank and some of the younger guys, you know, I really tried to take my game to the next level. Right. Now, certainly um, we've enjoyed some of your performances this year. I mean, you're leading our team in scoring and over 18 points a game currently. And uh, we all witnessed the 40-point game against uh, Brockport, um, which was, it was pretty amazing to watch. Did you feel any different that day? Not really, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't really know I was even scoring that much. I was just trying to play in the flow of the game. Uh, my teammates were making really good passes to me. You know, fortunately, I was scoring underneath and trying to get to the foul line as much as I could. Right. It seems like um, a few of your shots there, you were quite a few, two or three feet behind the three-point line. Yeah. You know, and, and nothing, you know, just singeing the nets there, nothing but net. Just, I mean, uh, but, I mean, does, does it... Uh, do you actually feel like maybe you're in a zone if it's if if you have a day like that? Um, I guess in a way because I'm not really thinking about it. I'm just kind of playing the flow of the game, and when you know I feel like um, I have an opening, I'm going to take it, and when I don't, I'm going to try and make my teammates better and, and get the ball in their hands and have them create. Right now, you talked about uh, free throws, trying to get to the free throw line. Uh, certainly, you're you're over 88 percent, which is pretty spectacular for any level it doesn't matter you know what what we're doing but um, is that something that you've always been are you have you always been a really good free throw shooter have you worked on that I mean it, um, it's kind of a lost art you see yeah. a lot of kids in high school and they can't hit free throws at all but up until really this year I really haven't gone to the foul line as much you know in my whole life playing basketball but I think it's a credit to you know our guards you know they're getting in the paint creating and right. they're dishing off to me down low and you know, I usually have a bigger guy on me, so I'll just try and pump fake him right. and, you know, try and get the foul call and go to the line. Right. Now, uh, I mean, because free throws add up over, over a game. I mean, you lose a game by two points and you look at the box score and our team has three free throws or four free throws. Right. And, and traditionally, you know, we've done pretty well. And, you know, I just sometimes, you, you know, when you watch guys on television in the NBA who can't even hit, you know, 50 percent and, you know, someone like yourself, I mean, work on it or you just... Uh, yeah, in practice and, you know, in, the, in my spare time, I'll just go in the gym, I'll shoot foul shots. But, I mean, you know, no one's guarding you from 15 feet away. So, right. you know, you try and make those count because, <laughs> right. like you said, they can be the difference in the game. Right. Um, so this year, uh, you know, we had Vince on. And he's talking, you know, young team. You know, you have a chance to really grow with the young team. I mean, what's that like this year to be able to play um, with? It's actually a great, uh, we have a lot of young guys and we have a lot of talented guys too. So that the mix of both is great and the future is really bright because, you know, a lot of the teams in the SUNYAC are graduating a lot of guys this year. So next year, I really think that we can contend for the championship. I mean, you know, wins and losses this year, but I think we have a great group of guys that are really committed to, you know, winning and winning for years to come. Now on the, uh, within our team, uh, do you see yourself as a leader, a, as a sophomore? Um, I'm starting to more and more. Um, you know, with the minutes I've kind of been playing lately, I feel like, I, you know, I have to be a leader on the court and, you know, take some of that off Frank because, you know, one person, you know, it's a lot, right. a lot of responsibility to have. So I'm just trying to, you know, follow him a little bit and get, like, what he's been doing and try and take it into my own. Right. So it sounds like you're, you're, you, you like that, you're accepting that responsibility. Oh, and yeah, it's something yeah. that you really... I've, worked my whole life you know to play at this level and I think you know I'm ready for that responsibility now uh, going forward um, you know uh, uh, academically you said you communications major I mean uh, you said you just switched over from business yeah. what um, what are you hoping to do with that um, I'm not too I'm not really sh too sure yet um, hopefully you know get a job right out of college I know it's you know tough now but you know, right. I think if I keep working hard, maybe something will open up for me. Right. Well, I know that the communications department here has got a lot of, a lot of different venues and avenues that you can go into. So, you know, yeah. and, and uh, certainly you should come by my office and we'll see if we can get you going on some things in there too. I mean, just to have you utilize your talents and abilities in that yeah, area. So, um, so academically, you settled in pretty good. Uh, I mean, if you were, you know, telling a recruit, I mean, what's the one thing you'd maybe tell them about Oneonta and the basketball program? Um, I think we have a very close team, and I think we're accepting of each other, of, you know, all different types of people. And I think the campus here is great, um, and the academics are also great. So I think the combination of three, you know, what more can you ask for in a college? Right. 
Well, we certainly uh, wish you good luck the rest of the uh, you know rest of this year, and then certainly, you know, maybe we'll have you back on the show when you're a senior, and we can kind of talk about a cumulative uh, yeah. career here. So uh, certainly, continued good luck, and uh, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. All right, I'd like to thank uh, sophomore Zach Major for coming by tonight, and if you join me after the break, we'll be joined by sophomore captain Frankie Kelly. You're on your way to meet up with friends, but you can't seem to get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way. Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving. Make sure you get where you're going. Back to the show. Joining me now in studio is sophomore basketball captain Frankie Kelly. Welcome to the show, Frankie. Thanks for having me. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, like you said, I'm a sophomore here. Um, I went to Kennedy Catholic in Somers all four years. Uh, I mean, I've been playing basketball since I've been five years old. Um, my grandma was actually the first one that put a ball in my hands. She bought me a little Fisher Price hoop. So that's kind of how I got started with that. Um, I'm currently a business economics major here. <clears throat> um, haven't taken too many business classes yet. This semester is probably the first one where I have three plus, three, four. Um, basically knocked out all my gen eds, so. Right. How's the, um, how's the academic, uh, you know, how's that side of the, you know, we'll talk a little bit about your basketball, but the other side, you know, you're a student here. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the, how's that going so uh, far? It's definitely a lot more challenging than high school. Um, the biggest thing is, though, time management. Uh, I'm actually rooming with the manager here, Sean Dacey. Uh, he has great student, 3.9 GPA, so he's actually helping out a lot with my time management. And uh, I think with this next semester coming up, he's, it's going to be in need, much need. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, uh, how important is it to, you know, of course, you, you know, you have role models, mentors, you know, playing basketball, playing sports, but how important is it to have someone like Sean, you know, giving you some help academically. I mean, we all need help. Right. I mean, I'm, you know, so I mean, how, how important is that for someone to take um, the time? It's take great time. because I know uh, Coach Medici has a lot on his plate, um, especially with such a young team. He's pretty much doing everything for us. Um, to just dish off the academic side to Sean is really great, and I know it helps him out a lot. Right. And it's also great for us. I mean, like you said, he's a great role model, 4.0 student, so can't get much better than that. Now he's been with us four years, uh, quite involved. I mean, he re he enjoys being our manager, and he mm -hmm. certainly have done a great job. I know Vince relies on him to do quite a bit of things, and you know, get you guys ready. You know, keep right. it, keep it, keep you guys focused, maybe at times. But uh, how important is it to have people that aren't basketball players involved in the program? I'm sorry, that aren't. Uh, that yeah, that aren't. You know, just um, people that want to be around. It, I think it's good. Uh, I think it builds the team morale. Um, as long as they want the same goal, which I think we have, they all know their role and they know that we're all working towards the same goal of a SUNYAC championship. Yeah. And I think it's just great to have them all around. Right. Now, uh, you're a uh, sophomore captain as, as a sophomore. A lot of you know, big shoes really to fill for someone who's just really been in the program. You're a SUNYAC Rookie of the Year last year after leading our team in scoring. and certainly uh, shined all, all season long, not just uh, you know, at various times. So being recognized by the coaches, I mean, what, what did that mean to you to be? Um, well, that was a great honor. Um, I mean, I don't, like, I don't really like talking about myself and <laughs> personal accolades, but I mean, I definitely felt honored that uh, there was great freshmen last year and just to be able to have that right. Rookie of the Year accolade is just great. Now, do you think that um, lends credence, I guess, to your leadership role this year where kids are like, you know, he was the rookie of the year. I mean, do you think that helps you be become a better leader because kids will take that to heart and say, yeah, he's a good player? Um, I think at first it was definitely hard because in high school you're always junior, senior, then you're the captain, but never really like freshman year, sophomore year. So, I mean, that was definitely a little challenging at first, but... Coach Medici and some of the older guys from last year, um, they kind of helped me get up 
and kind of put more and more on me, leading me up to where I'm at now. And I know I have a long way to go, but I'm definitely happy I'm here. Now, are you a uh, vocal leader, or are you just kind of lead by example? Um, <laughs> I wasn't really vocal at all until I came here. Um, I'm trying to become more vocal. Uh, I think as a leader, you have to be both vocal and lead by example. So I'm trying not to only lead by example, more vocal. Right. Which is important as you know to build team chemistry. I mean, right. you know, getting these guys up at six o'clock in the morning to do weight <laughs> training, which we know can be yeah. tough. I mean, you got to be the guy that's got to get them up, right? Yep. I mean. Yeah, and uh, I don't think those guys <laughs> like me that much, but <laughs> I think it was for the betterment of the team. And I think it helped us this with the beginning of the season. We mm. were in a lot better shape. Right, because I think, uh, I mean, ultimately they have to know that you're. You're, you're trying to get them all to do the same thing. I mean, we right. want to win, we want to do well, we want to play well, and you really can't do that if you're just, you know, if you don't condition your, you know, work right. out and all that kind of stuff. So, um, ask Zach the same question. You know, even in your second year, what, you know, what's the one thing about Oneonta that you would point out to a recruit that you, you know, why should you come here to Oneonta? Um, well, I know it doesn't, it might not sound like it, because of our win-loss record this year, but um, we're young right now. We definitely have a bright future. Um, facilities here are better than anywhere else I was looking. Um, the academics are great, the campus is great. And I mean, just the guys, that the group of guys that were around, it inspires you to be better than you were and just keep pushing and keep moving forward and keep just bettering yourself that's pr that's really the biggest thing I think all right well we certainly know that uh, if the first two years of it are any indication for your four years here we certainly know that there'll be a lot more success coming your way and and we you know hope you continue to stay healthy and stuff because we know injuries can always play a part and you know maybe not playing as well as we want but uh, certainly you've done well you're off to a great start and good luck the rest of the Thank way you. and and uh, hopefully we'll have you back here maybe year, year next, so we'll Sounds talk more. Great. All right, well, thanks all right, for coming thanks by. Thanks for having me. All right, well, I'd like to thank all the members of the basketball team, along with Coach Medici, for coming by tonight. And uh, as always, you can follow the men's basketball team on our website at www.oneontaathletics.com. And please like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time on Inside Red Dragon Sports.